Hey folks, welcome back to Nomad Reviews for another toy video. Today we're looking at Blade Warrior by Present Toys. Huge fan of the Blade films as a kid. Not only did they help save Marvel, but they put Blade on the map. Wesley Snipes was apparently trouble on set, but man was he cool. I actually had the Hot Toys version, but had to sell it last year, so I was excited to see Present Toys announce this one. To be honest, it does look like another KO in a long line of KOs of the Hot Toys figure, but we're going to take it to the light box to find out. Before we do, may I request that you tap that like button and subscribe button to support my channel. Here we have the front of the box and it's actually quite nice. I think Present Toys outsourced. The artwork for this clearly to a very talented visual artist. I just love the silhouette of Blade right in front, the red eyes and the way the coat is shining from one side, very artistic. He's got his katana right in the center. Up top, you have the Present Toys logo. Down below, it says Blade Warrior, one six scale collectible figure. I really love this artwork. Really good job here. Turn it to the side, the red and black artwork continues. The beautiful artwork continues at the back. I think the print quality is not as good as it could be, which is to be expected. This is a budget third party figure. This is not Hot Toys. So the colors don't pop as nicely as they could, but it still looks really cool. It says Blade Warrior up top, has some warnings, and that's pretty much it. Once you lift the lid, you are treated to this even better box design. I love this shot of Wesley Snipes. I don't think it's a toy, but you can't be too sure. It looks really good, really nicely done by the visual artist. It says Blade Warrior over here, present toys. And of course, here's a quote. And I can never be as cool as Wesley Snipes. Saying that quote, but I'm going to try. Do you think I forgot about you? OK, that was terrible. I love this open mouth. I don't know if it's from the film or what, but that looks uh, an awesome shot of a vampire mouth. Right at the back again, you have Blade Warrior up top. Nice logo at the back and some warnings. Whoa. <laughs> Gotta say, I was expecting the worst. I'm actually quite impressed. I think they've just done a recast of the original sculpt, but they've added a bit more detail. The paint apps are actually better. Here are all the accessories that you get with Present Toys Blade Warrior. If they seem familiar, that's because most of them are just straight up copies of what Hot Toys gave us with their Blade 2 figure. Of course, Present Toys isn't the first company to copy all of Hot Toys accessories. You've also had lots of kits in the past. They've included all of these accessories. They've included some soft goods and they've included a sculpt. All you had to do was put them on the body. And then you had Fire Toys, I believe that's what they were called. They released the whole set together. So yeah, Present Toys isn't the first company to do this. So the base is definitely an upgrade over what we got with the Hot Toys figure. This is much larger and much more prominent. That one was just tiny, regular base. In addition, we have a sword. It's in this scabbard. You can take out the sword, of course. We've got four hands, sunglasses, these throwing blades. These are hand armors with extendable blades, machine gun, two handguns, shoulder holster for the two handguns, and this jacket. Of course, you also get some stakes, but they're already on blade. Let me just show you how that looks. Here you go, they're already inside. They've got this plastic on it just so that it doesn't damage the soft goods. I like how the sunglasses look. Love the detail on the frame. I like the shading on the front. Unfortunately, the paint apps on mine aren't as clean as they should be. There are some white dots if you look very closely. Still, it's acceptable for a third party figure, I think. The hands look OK. I wish that the cutting of the mold was a bit better. There is some plastic tearing off of mine and there's some streaking on it, too. So they're acceptable. I wish that we had gotten some extra wrist pegs, though, because my last present toys figure, the wrist peg broke and Kit had to send me another one. Blades throwing blades look nice, some detail right in the center. And they're kind of sharp, too. I like it, I like the plastic. Uh, they've given it some detail with some paint applications. 
Unfortunately, there is some smearing on mine. Though again, that's to be expected with a third party figure, I guess. These shields go over Blade's arm and the blade comes out like this. My only concern is that the blade over here is a bit loose and it's not even straight. It's a bit wobbly. The handguns, they look okay. The black is unpainted. I wish they had painted it. It looks on par with a standard Hot Toys handgun these days. If you've opened up Black Widow or one of their long line of Marvel figures, they're pretty much like this. Here's the machine gun. Looks solid, looks serviceable. There are some paint issues. There are some scratches on mine. If you look closely, for example, here. Still, I'm not complaining again. It is a third party figure. Here's the sword and the scabbard. This piece fits in the back. I hope it fits OK because the scabbard is already quite loose. You can take out the sword and this is quite wobbly. I wish it was die cast. I wish they'd done a done some improvements here and I'm not even fond of the paint apps. Overall, it's OK. Uh, unfortunately, there's this weird plastic line that's going over here. Maybe it's not cut very well and it's not on the other end. Now, I wish they'd done this as a die cast sword. I wish they'd made some improvements in this regard instead of a straight up copy. Handle looks OK, too. So, yeah, I do wish that this was a bit better, but I'm not too dissatisfied. I guess that's the theme of the accessories. They're not the best, but they're serviceable and that's acceptable for a third party figure in my book. Blade's puffer jacket is basically a copy of what Hot Toys made, though the material is less shiny, less nice. The craftsmanship is not as good. There's some threads poking out if you look at it closely. They have made one improvement, though. Nice piece of innovation. Instead of Velcro, they've gone with magnets. What I really like about that is that they're sewn inside the fabric, so they're not going to fall out, which is something Hot Toys can take note of because their magnets keep falling out of their products, especially when you just open the box and it's a new product, but the magnets are falling out. So, and they fit quite nicely. It hooks on really well, won't open. So I think that's really good work. And I like this piece of innovation. Blades gun holsters. Again, copies of what Hot Toys made. This goes around his shoulders and these hang around his side. They're nicely done. I think that these are leather. Uh, they, at least they smell like leather. Uh, unfortunately, the craftsmanship is a bit weak compared to what Hot Toys did. The cutting lines aren't as clean. There's some threads poking out. That being said, and of course, as a the theme of this accessories review, they're good value for a third party figure. The base is certainly an upgrade by Resin Toys over Hot Toys. Nice big base, very solid material. Good logo over here, and I really like the artwork right in the center. Nothing at the bottom. Feels good too. To sum things up, the accessories are quite nice, but that is also because Present Toys has reused these molds from Hot Toys down to the details. For example, the gun handles have the same nice texture on them. These knives over here, they're serrated. We've also got the logo in the center. These blades come out, but the craftsmanship and the paint apps leave something to be desired. For example, these knives are a bit loose. So is that blade in the scabbard and the craftsmanship on these gun holsters, not the best. That being said, as I said, this is a budget release and for a budget release, the quality of these accessories is pretty good. I used to work in the leather industry and I can tell you this is genuine leather. Uh, there are three ways to tell. An experienced person can actually just look at it and just say, oh yeah, that's leather. Uh, the first way of course is the smell. It will smell like leather, which I find intoxicating. I love the leather smell. Uh, the other thing is that you're going to notice a nice grain on it, uh, which is a very much a leather thing. And um, real leather stretches a bit more than artificial leather. So this is most certainly real leather. Um, even though it's a nice real leather jacket, it does have some uh, flaws. There are some threads coming out. And um, I wish that this uh, red lining inside was a richer color. This looks a bit cheap. Uh, that being said, uh, I'm nitpicking. 
uh, for a budget toy, this is actually a very nice leather jacket in 1-6 scale for Blade. Time to look at the sculpt now, and I would say this portrait is a recast of the Hot Toys portrait that's been around the block for 10 years uh, at the hand of third-party figures and uh, kit manufacturers. And now it's present toys turn. But what they've done differently from other companies is that they have actually improved the paint apps. Uh, let's start with the skin tone. It is very rich compared to what Hot Toys did. There's complexity here. It looks really good. And they've really brought out the details on this uh, sculpt. For example, the cheekbones, they look much nicer uh, just by giving it a more detailed wash and uh, better paint applications. Uh, the eyes look pretty good too, nicely painted. Side profile, outstanding. Tattoos here, just like the Hot Toys version. Sorry, this looks a bit creepy, but I just wanted to show you the tattoos all around the neck. Looks great. Hair, of course. Nicely done. So yeah, this might be a recast, but I think they have done an outstanding job here with the paint apps. And uh, for me, the head sculpt is always the most important part of a package. And in that sense, even if you do have the Hot Toys version, I would say just buy this one and put the head sculpt on the Hot Toys body if you can. Uh, let's get the glasses on. The side doesn't look as good because it's not quite uh, going through the ear like it should, but from front on, it looks pretty awesome. Here is Present Toys Blade Warrior straight out of the box in a museum post, and I think it looks fantastic. I really love this sculpt. I love the paint apps that they've applied that I think look better than what Hot Toys did. And of course, that leather jacket really gives it a nice finish. However, there are a couple of problems that you might notice or you might not. Uh, for a value product, it's fine. And some of these are fixable. The first issue is that the body is a bit too small for this head. I don't know why, but present toys picked a smaller body than they should have. And even compared to Hot Toys, the body is a bit too small. So that is strange and it makes his shoulders look a bit smaller than they should be. However, that's easily fixable. You can just pad it up with cardboard yourself and you'll be fine. Uh, the other issue is, while I appreciate that they have applied a upgrade to the pants by making them out of leather, <laughs> the problem is that it is not very screen accurate. If you watch the film, it was a very bendy, flexible material so he could do his martial arts scenes more easily. And the leather pants, they don't look right. However, they do look good. So if you're going for screen accuracy, you might want to replace them with some other third party pants that are a more elastic material. But if you just want them to look good, it looks good. Uh, unfortunately, the outfit is very well fitted. And I say that unfortunately, because that means that a body swap would be almost impossible without tearing the fabric. A closer look now at Blade Warrior with a prime lens and you can see how good that leather looks. For some reason under the camera, his skin looks a bit cartoonier than it is, but it looks fine to me. Love the side profile. Sculpt looks good. Jacket looks awesome. I love that it's wired too. I do think it looks a bit skinny from the top, but you can fix that by putting in some padding, maybe some foam. Just like the Hot Toys version, there is a hook for the scabbard. And if you remove that, that's what the hook looks like. Changing jackets on this Blade Warrior is pretty much standard operating procedure. Remove the arms back. Take off the hands. One came off with the pegs, one came out without, but that's fine. Very carefully, take off the jacket. There you go. And man, that does not look good at all. He definitely needs to have a jacket on because that body is not as muscular as it should be. 
If Wesley Snipes saw this, he would cringe. Yes, the body looks a bit too thin, but we're going to fix that, hopefully, by getting the vests off, getting the puffer jacket on, and then getting the vests and the holsters on. So you just turn this around. Pretty easy. To get rid of these, move, open these buttons. There you go. Now that these are off, you can just easily take it off the head. Now you get the puff jacket on. Slide that back over his head. Raise his shoulders. So the clothes swapping operation is now complete and I think it looks awesome. I was concerned about the body being undersized, but the puffer jacket gives it that bulkiness that it sorely needs and the vest looks good on top. Uh, to get the gun belt on, again, you just follow the same procedure as I showed you. Just pin the arms back, take off the hands if you must, and then you get the vest on. I do have a couple of concerns though in terms of quality control. Uh, the first is that this gun strap over here, it attaches by magnet. And the magnet is very tiny, so I'm just a bit concerned that the glue is going to wear off and that magnet is going to break, as it usually does with Hot Toys, often straight out of the box. Uh, the other concern I have is that this puffer jacket is very tight, especially at the wrists. So you have to roll it back to get the hands on, otherwise you will not get the hands on. And if you roll it back, I'm just concerned that this jacket is going to get damaged. So far, so good. Uh, finally, I have another concern. And what I have not done is attach these straps to this belt, which I believe it's how it's supposed to be. I couldn't get this belt open, so I've just skipped that part. But you are welcome to try and let me know how that worked. I tried quite hard. I couldn't get this belt to open. Man, this side profile looks fantastic. I'm actually thinking about getting another one of these uh, to pose him like this. So my other concern at the back is the tightness of this vest. Uh, what they've done very smartly is make this a very stretchy material so you can stretch this out so that the buttons can attach here. And the buttons actually feel better quality than Hot Toys. Uh, a lot of the Hot Toys buttons like on Luke Skywalker have broken on me recently because it's just so damn tiny. But these are a bit bigger and they are pretty good. But I do think this is a bit too tight. So I am concerned about it breaking. However, so far so good again. This outfit looks so good under the prime lens. Just absolutely beautiful. Very detailed outfit. The leather really pops. I know those pants don't look accurate, but they look nice. Meanwhile, that puffer jacket really gives it the bulk that the body sorely needs. Time to look at the articulation now. I've taken off the coat and with the coat on, of course, the articulation is a bit more limited, especially in the shoulders and arm area. Head tilts left, tilts right, hooks down, and <laughs> looks up quite far. Shoulder goes up quite nicely. Moves pretty much 360 degrees, unless you have the coat on, then it's a bit more limited. Nice double jointed elbow. Like the sound of that ratchet joint. Sounds really nice. This is a cut, so you can get nice articulation at the bicep. Nice articulation on the hand. Waist tilts left. Tilts right. Decent app crunch. Thighs move apart, but you have to be careful again, just because of the stitching on the pants. Tie rotation. Double jointed knee. Very little mobility on the ankle, unfortunately. Just have to be careful with these Spikes, stakes, I should say. You don't want to damage the pants. 
leg kicks forward, but again, it's limited by the leather pants. Overall, the articulation is pretty good. Uh, the quality of the present toy's body is not that great. I've actually broken already one body on a previous figure uh, through regular handling. And when you add the leather element to the pants, the articulation is more limited. And when you add the jacket, it's even more limited. However, you can get some nice poses. And I would overall give the articulation a thumbs up. Now that we've seen the articulation, it's time to put that to use in the toy room with some fun poses. For our size comparison, we have 1973 Hot Toys Wolverine, we have Captain America from Avengers Endgame, and of course we have Mark 85, again from Avengers, all by Hot Toys. And I feel that Wolverine was a bit undersized, and he should have been a bit bigger, and even then, he's still taller than this KO here. And of course, present toy's blade is much smaller than these two. So, yeah. It is a bit too small and unfortunately the clothes are so fitted that I do not think a body swap would work very well. My final score for Present Toys Blade Warrior is going to be 4 out of 5 stars. Man, I really struggled on the score for this. Yes, it's a KO, but it's incredible value for money considering the Hot Toys version is expensive and falling apart. Improvements to the coat are fantastic. Love the wiring and the leather material. I really do think they did a great job with the paint apps on the sculpt too, and the toy is a lot of fun to pose thanks to the loud ratchet joints and multiple clothing options. Of course, this isn't a perfect rendition of the Hot Toys version. The body is undersized. The leather pants look good, but they're not accurate or flexible. Some of the craftsmanship is a bit subpar, and I wish it had an ankle or toe pivot. But you know what? For the price, you're getting an awesome 1-6 scale figure. So if you want a cost-effective version of the Hot Toys toy, with a better coat, jacket, and sculpt, you should probably get this. That's it, folks. That's my review. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you can tap that like button and subscribe button to support my young channel. Hope to see you again soon for more toy reviews and entertainment reviews.